At the start of the episode, Dr. Adler urges Smith to euthanize Thomas, calling him defective. He says it is a crime against the state to withhold Thomas' diagnosis and not kill him. Smith pleads to Adler for more time, but Adler can only guarantee the boy's safety for one more day before Nazi officials discover his condition. So, the doctor warns Smith if he doesn't handle the situation sooner. He emphasizes reporting it to the health board of the state. Frank and Childen decide to forge cufflinks that Abraham Lincoln wore on the day of his assassination to sell to a client. They desperately need money as they have a debt to settle with the Yakuza within seven days. As Frank goes to his home to retrieve his tools, Lem pulls him away before the Kempeitai spots him. It turns out that the Kempeitai has been rummaging through Frank's apartment and seizing all of his possessions. Lem then takes Frank to meet Gary Connell, who tells him that Juliana betrayed them by helping Joe and has now defected to the Greater Nazi Reich in New York. Frank is shocked and frustrated at the same time as he had believed Juliana was in Mexico. When Lem asks him to join in their mission and fight for the cause, Frank refuses and storms out of the place. Gary, however, commands Lem to follow him. Meanwhile, Juliana has to undergo a detailed medical examination to qualify for asylum. The Nazi doctors thoroughly examine her with many medical tests, searching for every clue to her heritage. Sometimes later, in an interrogation room, a Nazi officer asks about her sexual relationship with Joe, but Juliana denies the involvement of any sexual relation. He then asks her for a complete catalog of the past two weeks, including every place or person, including the resistance that she visited, while unaware of being observed by Smith. Back at her parents' place, Inspector Kaido makes a surprising visit. After informing them about Juliana's recent defection, he asks them about her recent activities. They mention that her behavior was off because of the films. Kaido realizes that Juliana met the man in the high castle and leaves the place before ordering the parents to notify them in case Juliana contacts them. In New York, the Nazis are still questioning Juliana. Soon after, Smith enters the room and asks Juliana about the resistance members she identified. He then decides to grant her asylum despite some medical issues standing in the way. Later, Smith drives her to his home and gives her a new identity as Julian Mills. Mrs. Smith helps Juliana settle in a dormitory. However, Smith still needs something from her. Precisely, more information about the man in the high castle. We now finally see Joe, who is in Berlin to meet his father, Martin Huseman. At an evening party at Huseman's private mansion, Joe is upset that he can't speak with his father alone as he busies himself with party officials. Joe is, in fact, still annoyed with his father for leaving his mother alone in America. As Joe leaves, he meets a filmmaker, Nicole Dormer, who takes a liking to him. In the following scene, Childen delivers an ominous message for Frank. The message instructs Frank to go to a noodle shop at 4 p.m. to meet a resistance fighter. Surprisingly, the one he meets is Sarah, who happens to be Japanese. Sarah informs him that Juliana's actions caused the Kempeitai to arrest 12 innocent people for the murder of the two police officers when she shot them during her escape. Frank argues that he doesn't want to get involved, but Sarah still offers him the opportunity to help the resistance. In the meantime, Juliana stands in awe at her new apartment, facilitated by the Smiths. With a new identity, she stands in front of her mirror, cleans herself, and cuts her hair short. When she gets Joe's street address through the operator, she gets dressed to find Joe. When she arrives at his place, she doesn't find him but instead meets Rita, Joe's ex-girlfriend. Rita informs Juliana about Joe's trip to Berlin and also implies that his father has a permanent job set for him. Back in the Pacific States, as the Japanese Kempeitai round up the civilians in a factory, the resistance, along with Frank and Sarah, have a plan to rescue the innocents. Sarah poses as a hostage being held by Gary. As the Kempeitai busy themselves demanding her release, Lem attacks them, and Sarah finishes off another Kempeitai soldier. But when Sarah tries to grab the keys, Another Kempeitai holds her at gunpoint. Frank then manages to grab a gun and kills the officer from behind. In the following scenes, Smith takes his son, Thomas, on a fishing trip, supposedly to euthanize him. But after Thomas admits that he has a crush on a girl from school, and realizes that he cannot kill his son, Smith decides otherwise. Later on, when Alder meets Smith on his way to work, he reassures Smith that his actions are justified thinking he took Thomas's life. Smith's reply comes off as a surprise when he jams the syringe meant for his son into the doctor's leg. The doctor collapses immediately, preventing him from reporting Thomas's illness to his superiors. The show then cuts to Tagomi meditating in his office while holding the frame of his dead wife. As the glasses break, his assistant, Katamichi, rushes inside to check on Tagomi 
who is nowhere to be seen. The picture lies on the floor, and the assistant smirks as Tagomi travels again. Tagomi finds himself in a house. He walks to the window to see cherry blossoms in his front yard. Meanwhile, a car pulls up, and he sees his wife. But before his wife recognizes him, he teleports back to his office. The following day, Tagomi tries to advise General Onoda against continuing transport of enriched uranium on buses. He sends bombing photos of Washington, D.C depicting exposed survivors to the general but to no avail. In addition to touting the benefits of nuclear armament, the general also seeks punishment for the accused, for the death of the Japanese soldier during the fight with the resistance. Later, Tagomi notices burns on Katamich's right arm as he reaches for the photos. After the standoff at the factory, Frank and Ed meet with Mark Sampson to grab the materials needed for wielding the fraud cufflinks. Frank lines up a deal with his old friend, assuring him they already have a client ready for the transaction. Suddenly, gunshots resound near the open marketplace as the Kempeitai execute several innocent American civilians in retaliation for the dead officers from the Resistance's attack. Enraged at the sight, Frank rushes back to the Resistance's hideout place and informs them about the executions. The group then decides to steal explosive materials from a bomb guarded by the Kempeitai. Determined to fight, Frank brings Ed to the Resistance house to plan the bomb theft. In New York, Juliana visits the Smiths to study for her citizenship exam. But since Helen has to comfort her grieving friend, Dr. Alder's wife, she asks Thomas to assist Juliana. While studying, Juliana notices Thomas's hand shaking. After finishing, as she proceeds to leave, Helen invites her for dinner the following day. Back in San Francisco, the resistance fighters enter an abandoned building where the explosive materials have been kept. Ed and Frank begin drilling the bomb while Sarah acts as a lookout. Tension builds up as one misstep could blow them up. Fortunately, the group accomplished their mission without detonating the bomb and extract explosive materials. Ed then returns home while Frank and Sarah wait for the instructions from Gary. The two talk about how they ended up fighting for the cause of the resistance. As they share more of each other's stories, they are slowly drawn to each other and get romantically involved. Meanwhile, Juliana searches for George Dixon at his apartment in Brooklyn, but discovers that a new tenant has occupied the place. A while later, at the train station, Juliana is followed by a man and soon the female tenant she had just spoken to at Dixon's apartment. She then tries to blend in with the crowd but fails at her plan. The couple begins to shoot her down, but Juliana manages to slip away before reaching her apartment in one piece. As she smokes in the dark and crutches the chair under her doorknob, she receives a phone call. The man on the phone commands her to look outside her window, where she sees a man in a phone booth, and reveals that he is George Dixon, who she had been looking for. Frank is not the only one finding a spark with a new love interest. In Berlin, Huseman wants to make amends with his son, so he convinces his son to stay, but this isn't the ultimate incentive for Joe to stay. Later at the hotel where he currently stays, he stumbles again into Nicole Dormer the beautiful woman from his father's party. Nicole asks him for a drink and casually taunts him about his construction job back in New York, eventually scoffing at his sensitive nature with his father. Nicole then gives him a goodbye kiss while Joe cannot keep away his eyes as she walks away. Back in the Pacific States, Kaido decides to implement a plan after realizing that General Onoda has no feelings for people who could be exposed to radiation due to his incompetent decisions. He asks the general to meet at a club for a round of drinks. That evening, the general talks about how the Japanese Empire is seen as weak in front of the Germans, and that the bomb was the solution. Kaido then tries to inquire the general about the High Castle films, but the general wouldn't discuss it. As they talk, Kaido makes eye contact with the woman he has met before. The woman then comes over and pours a drink for the general. Soon after, the general gets too drunk even to work his motor functions. Kaido then uses the general's condition to have him sign a routine order that we don't get to see yet. At the Smith household, Helen's friend explains how her husband was found breathless inside his car after his heart gave out. Upon hearing this, Helen grows suspicious and realizes that her husband may have something to do with Alder's mysterious death. When Smith returns from work, she confronts her husband regarding their doctor's death. Smith finally confesses to the murder, explaining that the action was only to protect their son. He then reveals Thomas' illness. Helen begins to break down, worrying about their son's fate. But John reassures her that he'll protect their son no matter what. In the final scene, Tagomi contemplates alone inside his office. He then attempts another travel to his alternate world as he disappears gradually from the existing reality. Tagomi opens his eyes and finds himself outside the home he had been in earlier. But he now stands under the cherry blossoms he saw before in his yard. When he looks at the house, he sees his wife in the bedroom window. 
Thanks for watching. Subscribe and hit that like button to help our channel grow. Turn on the notifications so you won't miss any of our new videos. Thanks for watching.